Today I am going to show you how to dual boot between two operating systems. In this tutorial we are going to be using Windows 7 as our secondary operating system. You may be asking why I'm making this video. It is because I can no longer get Roblox to work under Windows Vista so I made a secondary operating system to run Roblox on and use Windows Vista for everything else but programs that don't support it. Doing this will help Windows Vista and Windows 7's market share increase. That's enough said. Let's get on with this tutorial. Okay, for those of you who do not have a Windows 7 installation disk, I'm going to show you how to create a bootable USB drive. The storage size must be at least 4GB. Otherwise, the ISO will not be able to fit on the USB drive. If you have important data on the USB drive, I highly recommend that you back up the data before starting the process. Since my data is already backed up, I can go ahead and delete these files by formatting the disk. And to format, what you need to do is just right click and select format. Also, which will save you a lot of time, is checking the quick format option. After that you just simply click start, and then click OK. Since you've already backed up your data, you can just go ahead and click yes. Now just sit back and relax and wait for, well, the USB disk drive to be formatted. Well then, there we are, the disk is formatted, it's simple and easy as that. So now what you need is a program called Rufus. I'll provide the link of the program in the description. So what it does is that it automatically searches for a USB drive and allows you to burn an ISO to it. So what you do is that you select the little button with a disk on it and then you simply just search for your ISO file. Mine is located in a folder called ISO files which is where I keep my ISO files. So once you found your ISO file, select it and click open, select start, anyway you've already backed up your data hopefully, because it will destroy it like it says, then just select ok, and sit back and relax, because this will take at least 5-10 to 10 minutes depending on how good your computer is. I'll be back once the process is completed. So there we are, the process is now complete, and now let's get installing. And also guys, just to warn you, do not press start again, because it, the whole process will repeat itself. Anyway now, like I said, let's install Windows 7. Okay, so first things first, we want to go to the control panel. So what we want to do is go to start and select control panel. Now you need to click on system and maintenance, scroll down and select create and format hard disk partitions, click continue. Ok, so now we right click and select shrink volume. Wait for it to upload. I would recommend shrinking the disk by half personally, but say you want it to be 80 gigabytes or something like that, would be 80 with three zeros at the end of it. I have 60 gigabytes, so I'm gonna type 30 with three zeros. After that, select shrink and wait for the disk management to split the disk in two separate partitions. Now right click on the new partition and select a new simple volume. Click next, next again, next. Rename new volume Windows 7. Perform, click perform a quick format. Click next and click finish. Wait for the disk to format. And there you go, you've now created a disk partition to install Windows 7 on. Click 
Okay, all we need to do now is press start, click computer, and select the bootable disk drive you just created. And click setup. And click continue. Click install now. And wait for it to load up. Okay, personally I would select to go online and get the latest updates for this installation. But as this is just a tutorial, I'm just going to select no. Do not get latest updates. Click I accept the license terms. I'm sure you all know how to do this, but yeah, you can just click next. Do not select upgrade or that will replace Windows Vista. That will literally replace it. What you want to do is select custom advanced. And make sure that you select the Windows 7 drive you just created and select next. I'll be back once the computer needs to restart. So all you need to do now is just let it boot through. And also guys, when every time the computer restarts, always boot through. Don't select Windows Vista the entire time Windows 7 is installing. So basically, from this point on, all you need to do is just nothing really, just if you have another computer, just go play games in it or something, just let the computer do what it needs to do. So now you're, you're done pretty much, well, now just let Windows do all the work. So here we go, look, Windows 7 is now installed, so now all you've got to do is just select a country or region, which is where you live. I live in the UK so I'll select it to match my details then you select next then you type the username you want I'm going to type Windows 7 since I'm using Windows 7 then again you hit next you can type a password if you like but I'm not going to and if you're not going to just click next. Since this is an example and a tutorial, I'm not going to type my product key. If you do have a product key, I recommend you type it in now. Or you could just do it later, it's up to you. Select use recommended settings. Select your time zone. Once you've done that, select next. I have a home network so I'm going to select home network and then Windows 7 should um, apply the settings and then it should boot up afterwards See there you go now, you've got two choices, Windows 7 and Windows Vista. And once you boot up, afterwards it should say, set up as repairing your computer for first use. And afterwards it should say, it should show the log on screen and it should say preparing your desktop. And there we go, Windows 7 is now installed on your computer without removing Windows Vista. So now you've got Windows 7 and Windows Vista on your computer. To get Aero or Wi Fi, you need to download drivers. Anyway, I'm sure you guys know what drivers are. Sometimes if you're lucky, I believe Windows 7 automatically searches for basic drivers and, well, through Windows Update and applies them for you. But if not, you can just restart the computer and boot into Windows Vista or Windows XP, depending on which one you have, and download it on Vista slash XP since you're most likely connected to the internet with your main operating system, which is either XP or Vista. 
So to get the drivers, what you need to do is um, open up your web browser on XP or Vista, obviously, and then, well, search up your specific laptop model and download the drivers for that. So, yeah. Now I'm going to restart the virtual machine to, to prove to you that Vista and 7 both built up individually. And none of your files on Vista are affected, slash changed. So, yeah. So there you are, you got both Windows 7 and Vista. Now I'm going to boot into Windows Vista just to show you that nothing has changed. Should go up just fine. There we go. I'm just going to prove to you that nothing's happened. As you can see, look, local disk and Windows 7, which means Windows 7 is on a totally different partition. And there you go, Windows 7 and Windows Vista on one computer. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope this worked for you. So, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you didn't like the video, you know what to do. So, yeah, thank you very much. And I'll see you soon. And yeah, this helps both Windows Vista and Windows 7. I really hate Roblox for what they did. So yeah, anyway. See you soon. Goodbye.